Hi, I'm Charles Gross. Hi, I'm Miriam Gross. And welcome to the Critics Circle Two on the Isle review. Today, we're going all the way to Milburn, New Jersey, the Paper Mill Playhouse, to review Clue. And this is based not on a play, not on a book, sort of on a movie, but actually a board game, which you probably are very familiar with and played it growing up. Well, if you're familiar with the movie Clue, you'll uh, see some of the twists and turns coming. And frankly, one thing I will say, I think you'll have a better time watching the movie version of Clue than seeing this stage production. It is a fun production. I enjoyed being there. I had fun. But do I think it was a great production, like production value wise? There were, things were a little schmacky. It was, it was, it definitely felt a little bit like community theater, like high budget community theater to me. Well, this was written based on the screenplay for the movie by Sandy Rustin. Uh, Additional material by Hunter Foster and Everett Price, directed by Casey Hushin. And basically the characters we know as Mrs. Peacock, Colonel Mustard, etc., are invited to the mansion, and yes, all the weapons, the candlestick, the dagger, the gun, make their appearances. And basically it's a it's a farce with uh, a musical orchestration that seems to be borrowed from an old soap opera. I think they got a hold of an old soap opera organ somewhere and they're playing it. And it can be a lot of fun at times, but, and believe me, I love a good farce and we so seldom see something like that that's but, true. It is very farcical, and it does that very well. You know, so I, I, I will, I will give them, uh, you know, thank, thank you for trying. But you know, compare it, say, to Noises Off, or um, the play that goes wrong. It really has has a lot to live up to. I mean, here's an idea of the humor. Who designed this mansion? The Parker Brothers. Okay, I thought that was very funny, though. So did I. So did I. But that was as that was as good as it got. That's fair. And for those not in the know, the Parker brothers are the original creators of the game Clue. Right. Yes. And the company that's, I think, still produces, uh, still produces the game. Also, if you're trying to solve the mystery, don't bother because you're not going to get a clue as to who done it. Oh, yes. Did I mention there is a murder? Actually, several murders. And there is motive, and there is blackmail, and there is Mark Price as the butler, who's actually not a part of the game, but he steals the show anyway. One thing I do want to mention with the movie that something I do like and something I don't like, the set design I think was very well done. I think they really, like, they they took what they had and they made it work very, very well. They made all the different rooms. They had them, like, pulled out and, like, uh, they they really they made the design work for the stage and I think that was very impressive. The one thing I think was a little less impressive and I'm sure this was a conscientious choice but they did not dress the characters in the colors that they come in in the board game except for Miss Scarlet was wearing red none of the other characters are wearing their traditional colors now like they'll have a little bits like Miss Peacock had a peacock feather and um, Mr. Green had like a, a, a green pocket square, but I really would have appreciated, it wouldn't have had to be so overt. Like, you know, you don't have to put Mr. Green in a full on bright green suit, but I really would have appreciated if, if they were wearing the colors. Like Miss White was wearing all black, except like the inside of her coat was white, the coat that she took off the second she came in, you know? And I really would have appreciated having more of that kind of color connection Um, because, you know, that's that's part of the game. And I think that that would have been part of the fun. So that was a little disappointing to me. Lee Savage designed the set. I think he did an excellent job, truthfully. I will say some of the props, like you could, you could really tell, not the props themselves, but when they were used, like 
there was a time when a glass fell and you could tell it wasn't a real glass. You could tell it was a plastic glass, but that's kind of also a trade-off of the stage and of budgeting, of being able to find something that has the right weight and look versus it's not gonna break on stage. So I can understand those kind of constraints being made, but overall, I think the set design was very good. Yeah, I agree. They did an excellent job on the set. You go away humming the set. <laughs> yes. All in all, I did have fun with the show, but I think there's only just so much that you can do with it. And there was only so far that they were able to get with it. So as um, one to five playbills, five being amazing, one being not so amazing, I will give this three playbills. I would give it three and a half because on the one hand, you could just watch the movie and I think you'd get a better, like I think the movie is a better product than the show. Um, on the other hand, it's a fun show. It's a good time. If you're not spending too much money on it, it's a good way to spend an evening. Okay, so this is Clue at the Paper Mill, and we'll see you in the Critic Circle. A candlestick? What's this for? A wrench. A lead pipe. A dagger. A revolver. It's a rope. Dinner will be served at 7.30. Shut up. Ah, right on time. Are you kidding me? Ah! What is this garbage? Is there someone else in this house, yes or no? Uh, no. No, there is, or no, there isn't. Yes. There seems to be some confusion about whether or not we are the only people in this house. There isn't. There isn't any confusion or there isn't anybody else. Either both. 